Record our conversation, see if there's any gems that we can use. Dude, you can do that. And you know what? Maybe we ought to forget about recording and just have a conversation. And you use those tidbits. They might be great. Welcome to my Boomer Buddies podcast, where we tell it like it was and is. Today, Billy and I are just kind of going off the cuff. Right now, we're talking about me wearing Bluetooth hearing aids and getting in trouble for not always hearing my wife. I'm going to say, I think in general, women like to talk and be heard more. Men don't quite get as worried about talking and not being heard. So right. I want to make sure Erin thinks she's being heard. Sometimes she gets right in the middle of the news, you know, or something. And so I question why you got hearing aids, but now it's all coming evident. You got those doggone things. So you could tune her out. I get busted a lot. My son and my my wife. He takes her side because he'll ask me a question, and then all of a sudden here, I go, "What? What? What? Are you listening to a podcast? Yeah, or or I'm listening to a news feed or something, you know? Because I don't always like what's on the TV, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like not in, of interest to me. So I'll sure. just politely listen to something else and because they want me in the room with them and I appreciate that. Do those hearing aids do a good job of allowing you to mix or? You can adjust on your phone these Costco hearing aids that I have. <laughs> uh, they're pretty good. Uh, I, I really like having them. I have moderate hearing loss. I know when I was still working and they'd have meetings, if I was down at the end of the conference table, I couldn't really hear very well. So it was a good thing that I got those. So, yeah, I told you we booked, or I booked, or we did a couple concerts this summer. One's in May, May 10th, I think. Yeah. Uh, Brooks and Dunn up here at the outdoor amphitheater. Oh, uh, that should be good. I, I thought they had broken up, but uh, apparently they're back. They did. Here. It's called the Reboot Tour, you know. What was it? Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and uh and then the other one I booked was up there again. Uh, that the first one I got lawn seats way up. And then uh the second one is the Doobie Brothers. Ooh. And um so that should be fun. And I got reserve seats for that. That should be good. And I also booked a hotel right next door to the venue. You know, the Saturday we're going to the concert and we got the hotel and I get looking at the calendar and Fourth of July is pretty much trashed. You're not going to go anywhere. You're going to go to a concert, so you, you're stuck at home or nearby. And I said to Aaron, I said, how about we go to Denver and see if someone's at Red Rocks Ooh. and then go to a Rockies game and then fly back to XNA and go to the concert and stay the night. Wow. So who do I find? A favorite band of hers, the Avett Brothers, which is a... They're not like a boys band, but they're just a real good harmonic group. They play some really good melodic music. They're great musicians. Uh, and you know me. You're like me. We're all the same. You play good music. You be a good musician. I like your stuff. You know, love live music. You know, of course we all do. And it's, I'm pretty, as they say, stoked, man. I know Gypsy. You know, James Walsh kept it going with the James Walsh Gypsy Band. Yeah. And we lost him coming up a year now. Uh, that sure was fun seeing him live. I wish you could have. You got to meet him at the golf course down in Cannon Falls. And uh, yeah. he put he put on a heck of a show. His musicians were spot on with playing the Gypsy stuff. And he had more to, more to do. But uh, unfortunately, he, he got sick. Yeah, I awesome. think that's so sad. Well, the backstory on that is we invited James down to our fraternity golf tournament. He became an honorary Beta Sig, <laughs> and he was just thrilled to do that. And he got to golf with myself and Joe Chesley, and we had a ball. And then afterwards, we all had dinner together in the clubhouse. And, Bill, you got to sit with James. Yeah, the owl. And he he enjoyed you and you know some of your jokes you were telling and he commented on that afterwards. I I um, wished I would have had the opportunity to see him play live. You know, Billy, here's a little sample from a Dyna Ball, in March of 2022.
that's just a little sample of the late, great James Walsh. He called us the Three Musketeers, and then after you know Dan got to meet him and he became the Fourth Musketeer, James, for some reason, enjoyed us, and uh, we enjoyed him. And he, in fact, was supposed to be part of the Boomer Buddy podcast because yeah. I had said, hey, I'm I'm throwing together a podcast, and I was wondering if you'd want to be a guest on there or a part of it in any way. And he goes, I want to be a part of it. Yeah. And because he had so many stories to tell with the Jimi Hendrix and, you yeah. know, he lived next to Mickey Dolans and, and Frank Zappa and they're part of the whole, the Manson killing happened right behind them up on the hill and they got questioned by the FBI. So many stories to tell. Wild, huh? Yeah. Uh, We're going to get his wife on. So we'll be able to get some stories about him through her. And she's an interesting lady too, Terry Walsh. I hope Nothing that the did. whole print thing that you did can is a success. I mean, the whole, I mean, the 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 roots of it are great. You got every tool there, and I just hope people grab onto it and and you mark it hard in St. Louis, according to what we saw. On yeah, maybe I should talk about the backstory on that. I had an idea. Joe Chesley looked up, and, and I did too, we looked up pictures of, of James back in the day, you know, the early days of Gypsy and yeah. how he looked and, and then getting to know him pretty well, going to a lot of his shows, how he looked now. I had an idea about then and now and uh, the Gypsy Queen in the background. Uh, I knew an artist from back in the day. He does pencil illustrations that are just phenomenal he did an illustration of my late brother randy without even meeting him and it was incredible how he captured the look so joe and i we uh we hired bruce peterson is his name to do that drawing that concept that i had in my head joe and i paid for him to do that and it turned out beautifully Joe got it framed, beautifully framed, and we gave it to James, and he had tears in his eyes, and he loved it. He said it was one of the nicest things that anybody did for him, and we just did it from the heart. You know, it, there's an inspiration to do it, and he, and he loved it, and he he hung it up proudly in his home. I thought, you know, how can we help out, Terry? And so had the idea of making prints and numbering them, limited edition prints yep. of it. And I'll overlay it here so people can see what it looks like. And so uh, Terry's going to move some of those. So if any of you out there are interested in in getting this, uh, she's going to sell these for $100. And there's a 1,000 prints. If you can help Terry out, she's a wonderful lady. And she wants to keep James's uh, music alive. And here's a way you can do it besides, you know, checking out his music. You can get a, a print and there's a certificate of authenticity that goes with it and it's a beautiful piece of artwork by bruce peterson and terry owns the rights to it so she can do this she can get this out there so based on the um the youtube documentary that i watched uh those ought to do real well in st louis it seems like people in st, st. louis, st. louis and the twin cities kqrs locally still plays them as well but you're right yeah. st louis uh in fact when we were down visiting Dan in Mission, Texas, Joe Chesley was talking to Dave. You know, I'm not going to say his last name, but uh, Dave is a Gypsy fan, and he's got all four albums, and he was excited to meet somebody that actually knew James Walsh. So I remember a concert I went to at Medina Ballroom, that's in the Twin Cities area, where Gypsy performed, and we were front and center, and James had a great way of bantering between songs but he would have celebrity guests too local celebrities and remember joe schmidt from yeah. channel five yeah. kstp well joe was a guest and he called him out he goes oh there's a sportscaster longtime sportscaster joe schmidt out there and i remember watching he goes i remember watching you as a kid joe you know, and, and obviously James is older than Joe, but that got a good laugh. We heard a Climax Blues Band tune when we were down in Mission, Texas together. That brought back a flood of memories. I just bought a vinyl, uh, Climax Blues. Vinyl's coming back in a big way. Us baby boomers are rediscovering it. We're pulling out, you know, 
getting the dust off of all that stuff. And the younger generation are starting to get turned on to wax. Uh, you have a good story about that. Yeah, Drew Aaron's son, who's 19 and he plays guitar, just learned how by watching YouTube, got super turned on to it. He can play, you put a rift on the radio or on the, on the, uh, box and he listens to it for a few minutes kind of bangs around on it for a half hour and next thing you know he's playing it you know it's pretty yeah. good but he really loves music too and the other day he was telling me oh yeah i think i'm gonna get a turntable and you know get some vinyl and i said oh cool you know well while i was out of town not at dan's but on another trip i was on he got a turntable and some speakers and then he got some vinyl. So he shows up, I guess, at the house, or I came home, I guess, and here's this turntable and some speakers sitting there, and it's not hooked up, and then it's a little stack of vinyl that he bought. And I said, oh, you got a turntable? Yeah, but he said, I plugged in this 10 millimeter to the back of the turntable, and he hands these, holds the red and white jacks up and says, I don't know how these go in the back of the speaker. <laughs> and I said, well, Drew, you need a amplifier. That goes in an amp and then the amp to the speakers. Well, there's a preamp in the turntable. I said, yeah, that's a preamp. So the next day we went to the pawn shops in town. We found them a $45 Kenwood something or other. And we had a hard time finding a straight up amp. All of the stuff was uh, video and audio sound systems. So you know, they're supposed to go with TVs and, you know, anyway, so we got him a cheap one and he came home, hooked it up and we've had a little vinyl party that night. <laughs> the next day we all go to work and Drew's in college. So he didn't have class till noon. He got up the next morning and he blared that thing, turned him and he blew his two new speakers right out because <laughs> the amp was far too much for him. And I had warned him. I said, man, be careful. Those speakers are really small oh they're great man they get really loud and i said you're gonna have a problem so i think we'll be going back to the pawn shop to get them some speakers i don't know we'll see but yeah it, that's awesome you were able to educate him on that uh you know you think about it yeah he yeah. doesn't know any better well he's like he how can it? those quimby little wires go in the back of those speakers and carry all that sound. I said, dude, well, that, you're carrying awesome. a lot on these, you know, but he's not, anyway, he's not yeah. hearing the music condensed digitally. You know, he's hearing the way it yeah. should be heard. You know, right. Right. For it to be heard. That's awesome. So well, now he's, for... he, he's on this mission to grow his vinyl collection. And, uh, you know, everywhere he goes, he pops into these antique stores and, but interestingly enough, this vinyl is no longer, uh, you know, seven fifty. They're like twenty to thirty to forty five bucks, depending on what you're buying. Right. Well, that's that's why you got to go to garage sales and things like that. Yeah. You get many of those in Arkansas where you're at? Oh yeah. No, they have garage sales. Okay. Here. Turn them on to hitting some of those. You can find yep. some gems that way. You go into some of these used record places, and you, we're paying more for them used than when they were new. Oh yeah, it's just stupid. It's stupid yeah. yeah oh wow but there's a there's one store here that has the most of it and and they have the everything they have the every what's wild rick is every letter in the alphabet has bands that i remember right dude <laughs> there's a lot of freaking music in our heads a lot right. of music in our heads right. A lot of music, a lot of music. You could talk to your siblings, you know, and I could talk to my siblings, and they'd have some that, oh yeah, because of the age difference. Uh, either way, they have theirs too. But oh, if yeah. you talk about it, you would at least have heard of them. You might not sure. have rabbit hole knowledge on it, but uh, yeah, we've sure. experienced so much in our days. And you're right, we got a lot in our heads. It's fun to share it now because some people, you know, have forgotten a lot. Yeah, it's it's wild. And, and the other thing about bands in our time is, okay, you got Eric Clapton and you got the right. members of uh, Derek and the Dominoes. Well, you start looking at other bands and, well, it might be Eric Clapton and three other guys. 
weird. And, you know, so in that era, there were all kinds of bands co-mingling and forming another band, you know, uh, the Turtles, Derek and the Dominoes, just Eric Clapton. You had, you know, Stephen Stills, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, the Crosby, Hulk. Stills and Nash, yeah. Neil Young. Buffalo Springfield. Buffalo Springfield. I mean, that spawned some other really good, you know, Richie Fure went on to, to form Poco. Right. You know, with Jim Messina. Jim Messina left and Loggins and Messina. You're right. right. It just flows. We could do a show on that alone. I mean, there's so much cool stuff that happened. The evolution of music. And we I, I wish were riding the crest of that wave, Billy. I wish I had the knowledge to know who went where and was where, but I can tell you this, every vinyl album I open up now, I read every bit of it because that'll tell you the story. That'll tell you who's on there. And well, I didn't realize that until later in life, after I went to college and started hanging out with all you guys, open up an album. You look on there and you go, holy shit, I didn't know that was on, that guy was on there. Well, the liner notes was Google before Google. That's yeah, right. <laughs> that, that's what it was. Recently, I bought a, a new to me pickup uh, about three years ago. Now it had XM available. Hmm. All right away, I get the solicitations, and I got them to go along with five ninety nine a month for a year. Great. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a kind of a backstory that I'm getting to the story, but anyway. Um, so then I, after a year, I went along with their, whatever it was with tax fees, you know, a donation for the rock and roll hall of fame and all this crap, mm. almost $32 a month. I went along with that for a year. Well, just the other day I got on the phone and said, time to quit. And they're not, no, 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 Mr. Neuenfeld, don't leave. And then of course I had a guy from another country talking to me. Yep. yep. So I re-upped, but I love, my point is I love XM for their knowledge the djs on xm talk about the music they talk about where it came from who's there who's with them and uh they have a lot of knowledge and that to me is and i listen mainly to classic vinyl uh classic rewind deep, deep tracks trust. yeah and that's the other thing too um when we were playing golf, we were listening to music. And I love getting together with you guys and listening to music. Why? Because two things. You listen to music the way I like it. Number one, the music I like. The music I don't always mainstream listen to, but you do, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. But also that we don't just jump around song to song. Joe put on an entire side of Give Me Back My Bullets while we were playing oh. golf. There's some good, some bad on any album, but you don't get to know the musicians by only hearing three or seven of their songs in a lifetime. You get to know them by hearing it all. You know? Well, yeah. Well, we are from the generation where we listen to albums. Right. In college, we listened to albums. Before that, when we were younger, it was 45s. So you'd hear whatever was on the radio and you'd go out and buy that little 45 and then get to know the flip side, right? Which was cool. Nothing wrong with yeah. that. But as we got older and more sophisticated, I'll, yeah. I'll say that even though we're just <laughs> idiots. And there were album cuts that became more popular to me than what was playing on the radio. The headline song was obviously, a, a you know, like a Climax Blues, Couldn't Get It Rise, a great yeah. song. But there are so many other songs. Uh, and as I recall, you're right. Rather than picking up the stylus, dropping it somewhere else, picking it up, dropping it somewhere else. I mean, there were a few people we knew that would do that. But our group, you drop the stylus on the front end of that side, and it didn't come up until the last song on that side was played. That was respect for Rick because Rick wanted to hear a side of uh, the Allman Brothers or he wanted to hear a side of uh, Foghat. And we mm -hmm. listened to it all. You know, we weren't 
jumping jobs, man. We were staying with <laughs> one job. <laughs> yeah. And it became part of socially what we were doing. Anybody that's listening or watching us right now, we would go out at the house we lived in and above the front porch, the bedroom up there, we would climb through the window and we'd put speakers out there and we would lay out there and just hang out, suntan or just hang out with the speakers on. And you could go throw the needle on that first song and, and you had 20 minutes where you could just relax. Beta you beach. Know? Yeah. And then, you know, flip it over for the other side or switch an album. But it was part of what we did. And it was ingrained in our psyche. It got us to appreciating an artist and the artist's music rather than a song. I can remember hearing, I was so excited. I heard You're the Cat on the campus station, KUMM. I think I bought it there at, at Agoraphobia and I brought it home. I couldn't wait to put it on. Some of the other tracks on there are so flipping good. Yeah. And that's the first time I heard it. Yeah. We talk about the soundtrack of our lives, just going out there and laying there, looking up at the sky and listening intently as to what was being played. Uh, and it might have been your stereo. It was a pretty good stereo. It was not my stereo. That was culturally what we did. Like I say, you were forced to listen to the words. You were forced to listen to the whole artist. And I think it helped us appreciate all the people that played on the album. I think it helped us learn the music better. Another example, Billy. When we were in college, a monster double album came out. Frampton Comes Alive, right? Mm -hmm. I can remember going to a different dorm room. I'll say his name, Bobby Sween. <laughs> uh, Bobby Sween. He got turned on to it by his brother, Dave, and he brought it to school. And that's the first time I heard Frampton Comes Alive. And that was so good. And he had the little wah, 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 the, the tube. Like, I don't know, the wah, yeah, what wah, they call whatever that? you call that. But yeah. that was something new and cutting edge. And I can yeah. remember the first time I heard that. Cool stuff. And incidentally, I say all of us, our core group, we were DJs at the local on-campus radio station. We all had little shows and we'd play our music and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, was kind of fun. fun too. You know, it, it forced you to, to sort of study some music and, um, you know, it was, it was cool. In fact, I don't know if I ever shared this with you, but the guy that ran that radio station mm -hmm. bought a radio station in Glenwood. And mm -hmm. after I was left Morris and was married, he asked me if I wanted a DJ on his station. You were and living a, in Glenwood. You were living yeah, in Glenwood. Yeah, yeah. So I had a Sunday night radio show. I didn't and, know that. Yeah. And now I have to say it was classical music. And I'm not talking about classic rock. Right, it was right. classical music because, you know, we were playing to the local folks. And, uh, and so I learned... A little bit, but he he gave me a playlist, and I basically yeah. ran the commercials, and because he knew I had the uh, the know how, and sure. he was new, trying to make it, and uh, you know, eventually the radio station couldn't make it because there wasn't enough money to advertise in the small town. But uh, anyway, it was it was pretty cool. I didn't go to one single KUMM meeting. I just showed up the morning after Dollar Pitcher Night. You know, so anybody that would listen that early on the campus radio station was was either, you know, very studious or they were hungover as hell, right? So all I knew is that I had to play one new song every 15 minutes. Other than that, I played, you know, I'd get there in the morning and anything I put on would be mellow. I usually put on Landslide by Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. You know, and the new song at the time was uh, the live version of Riding the Storm Out, uh -huh. REO Speedwagon. And, and uh -huh. by the time noon, my shift was over, I'd throw on, you know, Star Star by the Rolling Stones and walk out. And, you know, the next person would take over. But I could hear on the speakers, you'd walk across the mall, I'd go to food service and I could I could hear what I had just thrown on on the speaker. <laughs> no, it's just a memory I have. Who were we talking to that was talking about they were a DJ at St. John's 
and uh, uh, down at Dan's place. Did you were you talking to him? He DJed at St. John's radio station. I didn't hear that story. And their radio station was wired. In other words, you had to plug into a a receptacle to hear it. Oh, it was okay. not broadcast. Oh, yeah, okay. We were broad. We were broadcast. Yeah. So eighty nine point seven on your FM dial. K U M. Is that what it was? Eighty nine seven. It's new with you here. On Sunday <laughs> night. We're playing a little bit of uh, traffic on the road. Yeah. Okay. A low spark. And then, and then, of course, whenever I'd be on the air, I would get a phone call for a request. It would be Hogger asking to play Low Spark. Low Spark, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Memories of our DJ days. Right. Oh, this is it's good reminiscing. But vinyl is making a comeback in a yeah wonderful way. I'm all for it. No, I am too. Someone the other day too asked. You know, is the equipment any better? Any? I said, no, it's just about the same stuff. I'm sure the styluses are maybe made a little bit better. Or the turntables are perfect speed because they're electronically driven and, and compensated rather than some belt drive on a cheesy little motor. You know, remember when you... you a, yeah, one here. Somebody would have a bad old turntable and you know, they were born, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boomers. Boomers. Yeah. I'll you right here. We've got it for you. Yeah. <laughs> what a conversation. Man, that was fun talking with Billy about the old days and now. <laughs> Hearing aids now and then music back in the day. If you're interested in getting that print of James Walsh of Gypsy fame, then and now, it's really a beautiful limited edition. Send an email to Terry Walsh, and you can reach her at stu854 at hotmail.com. That's S-T-E-W-854 at hotmail.com. I hope you take uh, note of that and order from Terry. Wonderful, wonderful item. Thanks to Billy again. It's always great having a conversation with him. Hearing aids, concerts, vinyl. The late, great James Walsh and Gypsy, who we'll talk more about in coming episodes. Thanks for listening and watching. And if you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe, share, and like, and tell your friends about it. We're also on Spotify and Buzzsprout. There's a lot of episodes to check out. Subscribe, and we'll give you some alerts on that. On behalf of Bill Neuenfeld, I'm Rick Reed for my Boomer Buddies podcast. Until next time, we'll see you around the block.